It was like any other day. For each individual, it carried with it its own significance. On page four of the Hindustan Times published that day from New Delhi, one Mr. Bidi Kapoor wanted to rent a four-bedroom flat in Punot Place. On page seven of the same newspaper, there was an advertisement for a Hind bicycle and another for a Chevrolet car. On the same page, there was a matrimonial ad for a 26-year-old Mathur girl. Ordinary images intertwined with even more mundane ones. In a government office in the capital, a lone bureaucrat typed a document that detailed an inventory of items belonging to the Food and Agriculture Department. A catalogue of government possessions. 600 ink stands, three staff cars, two sets of sofas, 40 chamber pots. A litany of items which would, in some future day, expose the unexceptional focus of the bureaucratic mindset. But which today was only proof that a division of family heirlooms was being conducted in a fair and equitable manner. In yet another house in Lutchens, Delhi, only days earlier, a British gentleman, Sir Cyril Radcliffe, had completed redrawing a map of India. He had used red ink to ruthlessly create new boundaries. Now, this map was to become the tangible physical contours of a country. For many individuals, the revising of these lines across a paper would be akin to redrawing the fate lines in their palms. But on this day that year, there also existed a premonition of surreal suffering about to come. It would be born from violence afflicted by man on man, born from the sheer scale of displaced persons as they would move in huge caravans across new borders and old homelands. were burning with new ambitions, looking for unexplored vistas, like this young man who had come from Lahore that day to document the historical event with his personal movie camera, and who later set up his family in the well-appointed suites of the Imperial Hotel on Janpath Road. Unlike many of his unfortunate brethren, he was blessed. Har Prasad had a modest family wealth which he had to leave behind. Technically, he was also a refugee, but his assets were his business acumen. Something he had managed to ferret away from his old homeland. Something which would give him a head start and a chance to build a new foundation. On that day, a cinema hall in Bombay was screening a film starring Raj Kapoor and Madhubala. Neil Kamal, directed by Kedar Sharma. In different parts of the country, members of royal families of erstwhile kingdoms waited for the boundaries of their empires to be erased permanently. Waiting anxiously to be absorbed into a new country which was about to be born. It was the day when the great-grandson of Queen Victoria was determined to make pomp and pageantry the leitmotiv of celebration. Epaulets and medals, shining carriages, mounted horsemen resplendent in their uniforms as he got them ready to transfer the accoutrements of statehood, using symbols of majesty and power at his command. Raja 
But on that day, there were still many others, like this man in his modest loincloth, now revered and anointed as a Mahatma by the entire world, determined to go on yet another fast. He was protesting against the monstrous sense of inhumanity which had enveloped the nation. And this frail 78-year-old Indian believed that only by punishing his already emaciated body, by inflicting a physical pain on himself, would he be able to purge the entire country of its guilt, if not its insanity. <laughs> और उसका मैं नाम लिखता हूँ, आर्थिक हूँ, तो मैं आपको कहता हूँ कि वो तो जिंदा है, मेरे लिए जिंदा बन गया। Like all important days in the calendar of a nation's history, it was also the day when leaders were preparing to address the masses. And this Kashmiri Pandit, whose vision had long been shaped by the inspiring and exotic history of his country, and who had by now managed a psychic link with the people of his nation, was setting to tell in his inimitable, immortal words the appointments he expected them to keep with history. In the words of that Kashmiri Pandit, who was to become the nation's first prime minister, a soul of a country long suppressed was finally going to find true utterance.